Hey, what's up everyone? Hey, what's up guys? Tony here from LearnAutoBodyAndPaint.com and I just wanted to get through a few of these questions from members. So here's one from Gene. Tony, so I'm basically broke and I only have a small budget. Uh, I got some single stage paint from a TCP Global and I have a Wagner Moto coat. I understand it's for Plasti Dip and special coatings, but I have heard of people using it for actual paint jobs using the detailer uh using the detailer just not much detail on what exactly they need i was wondering if maybe you had some advice on that i'm using what's at my disposable which is not much until i can build up my tool collection any tips advice suggestions or anything um that'll help is much appreciated so let's take a look at your wagner here uh, i would definitely say this is a no-no for any type of automotive paint. I would not even do it. it you know, these guns don't have uh, the proper pressure and atomization to spray an automotive paint. Maybe undercoating a thicker uh, finish where you don't care about how the finish looks like. Uh, maybe even Plasti Dip. I know they use this on Plasti Dip, but I just, I'm not a big fan of Plasti Dipping your car because if you see any of the Plasti Dip paint jobs over time, they just get worn out and dull looking very quickly. I mean, within a year, it looks like crap. Uh, show me somebody who's had Plasti Dip through the weather, through the sun, through the cold, over a year old that still looks just as good. You know, you're not going to get... Uh, the the professional looks as a normal paint job you know it's going to give you so i recommend not using if you have a single stage uh paint that you want to spray on man i would say just pick yourself up a reasonable single stage spray gun i would even take a look at the atom x20 low volume low pressure 267 i mean it's going to last you for years and years to come and this is the proper spray gun that you're going to need to paint a single stage or even base coat uh, paint jobs. You can get uh, cheaper spray guns out there for like a hundred bucks. But again, you know, you, you get what you pay for. You know, I would really recommend getting a mid-grade spray gun. Check out these guns, the Atom X20, super nice gun. If you, if you think you want to just go all out and um, bite the bullet. Check out the X27. This is one of the top of the line spray guns that Adam makes. Very, very good spray gun. All right, so I would say go for a low volume, low pressure spray gun. It doesn't have to be Adam. Uh, you can go for a cheaper version, but I would say, I mean, go with a mid grade. I mean, at least the X20, you know, you're getting about a little less than a hundred bucks cheaper than the X27. Just consider it. All right, this one, hell no, I would not even attempt spraying a single stage out of this toy, okay? Um, and look, they're selling for 159. So, I mean, for less, for around 100 bucks more, you can pick up the, the what you need for a spray gun for about 100 bucks more, all right? Um, so let's go to the next question here. Um, Brad Thompson, Tony, I have one quick question for you. I know that I've received my Atom X21 spray gun, and that is this one right here, guys. Uh, this is the Atom X21 spray gun. And in terms of adjustment or proper setting of the bottom dial air inlet, he's talking about this gun here. Where should I typically be set at? I understand that 29 PSI uh, is good for spraying. So you're a little on the high side there. You know, if you're doing a single stage enamel, it's anywhere from 25 to 27. If you're doing base coat, clear coat, you want to be spraying at 27 to 28 PSI. And what that means is that your trigger pulled, okay, air, only air coming out, and then you're reading about 25 to 27 on this dial, okay? This dial isn't the best dial because it's not as, uh, I wouldn't say accurate, but as detailed as far as the graphic goes here. You know, your gauge, it doesn't show you that much of a, a, a good gauge of where you are. You might want to pick up a digital gauge, help you out a little bit more. Um, actually working a deal and telling Adam, hey, you guys need to, you, know, you guys need to get a digital gauge somehow, you know, with these guns. So anyway, um, that's it. For the bottom knob here, this is your main air inlet, okay? This is what you're talking about. 
you want to keep this fully open okay this you can adjust your air coming in through this as well this is an internal air gauge this is an external air gauge okay i always recommend no matter what spray gun you're using sada iwata atom you want to keep your main air open okay some of them are over here some of them are down here at the bottom this one on the x27 is down here on the x21 is down here keep it wide open uh, this x27 model is also at the bottom okay this is closed this is open you want to make sure it's open all the way then you adjust your inlet through your air regulator here this is what you want to adjust okay super easy keep this wide open right trigger air coming air coming through right you adjust this dial to get your proper 27 28 uh, 28 29 if you're spraying clear coat okay 26 27 when you're spraying base coat this that's where you want to set your gauge okay that's basically it uh, so I'm pretty sure I answered your question so I know it's the low pressure model requiring less air but what for a guideline would you say approximately should I have my air control knob set to because I can get to 29 psi with both regulator and gun air dial open but a lot but it's really high air pressure coming out of my gun Um, any guidance on the sub so basically that's my answer okay you like I said 29 is pretty high you're, you're on the high side all right I would say 20, 20 anywhere from 25 to 29 29 is on the high side when you really want to atomize that clear coat and you're you're just laying the clear coat on you can go up to 29 28 is even a good pressure okay um, 26 27 is pretty much on average okay is where you want to be 25 for single stage paint jobs all right so I hope you I hope this cleared it up keep this open no matter what spray gun you're using I never adjust with this keep this wide open uh, sometimes it's gonna be over here and an easy way to tell is okay this adjustment here that's in line with your fluid tip is for your material flow okay I always like to keep this open as well so with the trigger I always like to back it out squeeze the trigger and then tighten it and once you feel it gets snug that's it because you know you got full fluid flow right and then this is for your fan pattern okay you got wide open and then you got narrow for fan pattern okay uh, and then on the x27 this is your fluid flow here okay and then this is your fan pattern here kind of like the sadas it's on the side okay and then this is your air inlet here you keep it wide open and then you can adjust uh, the bottom with your gauge uh, if you have a digital gauge or a standard analog gauge like i have on this setup here you adjust your air here okay and i always like to put my water filter below the gauge okay and then your inlet so you got your inlet cleaning out your water filter as a last insurance uh quote it's always not an insurance quote last insurance precaution here okay I always like to have this on before it goes your air goes through your gauge and your gun okay this is a cheap five six dollar insurance piece you know if you're buying spray guns or whatever always pick up a couple of these they last about 10 paint jobs or so uh, and just just keep them on here it's cheap insurance to keep your air dry and clean okay hopefully that helps uh, let's go on to the next question uh, Tony loved your videos for some time now I just got your VIP membership looking forward to learning more detail I'm in the middle of a project and I'm ready to prep for paint so I need some quick direction and suggestions I've completely disassembled and rebuilt my originally owned 2000 Jeep TJ beautiful truck by the way guys I love those the body is presently off the frame I wish you would have sent me some pictures uh, roof doors, seats, and all fittings are stripped out, plus all fenders and flares are removed. So I have an empty tub at the moment. I'm completely changing original factory color with a solid non-metallic commando green. Ooh, I'm loving it. Uh, that and some black accents would look really nice. My paint dealer has suggested a single stage paint system. I've replaced all rust holes with new material. <clears throat> 
My plan is to paint tub first, followed by doors, fenders, and front grill, since my garage has limited space. I have some surface rust areas and scratches to deal with. I'll be painting the interior of tub as well. A couple of questions. Here's one thing that just shoots out. <clears throat> Maybe you should do the interior of your car with a Raptor liner to give it, to give it that rugged, waterproof seal. I think that would be cool because you can get them in a multitude of colors as well. So look into that. Uh, as far as painting the truck in pieces, you're not going to have a problem because you're painting it a solid color. You have no need worrying about color matching. Even if you do have a metallic or a custom color, no problem in painting it in pieces as long as you don't add any special flake or pearls because that's where it can get tricky when you don't have everything next to each other for perfect color matching and blending. Okay. Uh, so here is the your questions. Jeep has original base coat, base clear coat metallic finish from factory. Is single stage a good option for good durability and solid color? Single stage is old school. I don't know why your paint dealer is recommending a single stage. It's for a budget paint job. It's for a quickie. You know, if you're buying and selling a car or if your customer has a cheap paint job that you want to get done, single stage is great, okay? Especially if you're on a budget. If you're going through all that prep, you're doing all of that work, I would suggest putting a good base coat, clear coat paint job on your vehicle. And base coat, clear coat is even more forgiving because if you get dust in the base coat, you can always wet sand it, redo it. If you get dust in your clear coat or it has a little orange peel, you can always color sand it, which means sand it flat with 1500, 2000 grit, and then buff it out to an extreme and gloss, okay? Base coat, clear coat is the way to go. So I would highly suggest going with a base coat, clear coat system. Um, you can get a house of color clear coat, which is really, really good. Uh, or you can check out Tamco at Zula.com. Um, very good clear coat from Tamco. I'll be doing, I actually have reviews of that already done on video that I just have to upload to YouTube. So you'll be seeing that very, very soon. And you can check out these products at Zula.com, Z-O-O-L-A-A.com. They have all kinds of amazing products there. Uh, number two, how do you suggest I deal with minor exterior surface rust? So if you just have surface rust, you want to make sure to sand it down with a 80 grit. Okay, get that surface rust off. Okay, then you can coat it with a 2K filler primer. All right. If you feel like it's extremely pitted and it really has that pit surface rust, I don't know what you're dealing with because I can't see your project right now. Then what you could do is sand it down to the metal, uh, wash it down with a 50-50 vinegar and water mixture. So just get some vinegar water, distilled white vinegar, mix it 50-50 with water, put it on a rag and just coat your metal. And just let, that'll actually kill the rust. The vinegar, the vinegar will kill the rust. Then after that's done, Basically, scuff it down with uh, 80 to 100 grit, okay? Then you can put a 2K filler primer on top of that. If it's a lot of rust, a lot of surface area, you might want to go with an epoxy primer on top of that. Then you can scuff that down with maybe uh, two, 150, two, one, you know, 150, 220, 280 in that area, okay? And then put a 2k filler primer sealer on top of that then you can block it out and you're ready for paint okay hopefully that helps how should the tub interior be prepped i'm thinking similar to door jams yes similar to door jams exactly you just need to scuff it it depends on how you plan on refinishing it though because if you've got if you're going to be doing a gloss base coat clear coat inside the tub as well you're going to want to make sure to get it smooth you know what i mean you're going to want a 2k prime it and sand it smooth with a 400 grit before you paint it if you're going to be doing a raptor liner like i suggest to give it that rugged look i mean it's a jeep right uh, plus it's more forgiving you're not going to have to get that detailed and crazy with finishing it because you're going to be covering it with a very heavy duty raptor liner and they even give you the spray gun i did a review on that it's on my videos it's also in VIP. If you check out the mini truck Daihatsu project, I show you exactly how to do the Raptor liner. So check out that project because it's all in there, okay? Um, so that's pretty much it, all right? So hopefully this answered your questions um, and I hope you love the video. It's Tony here from learnautobodyandpaint.com. Guys, if you are watching this on YouTube, you wanna learn more about auto body DIY and 
uh, just to do your own projects, to create a business out of this, check out learnautobodyandpaint.com. Grab your free 85-page booklet and uh, training, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Comment below, let me know what you think, and have a great, great week. Bye.